The important topics covered in the first lecture were the three-phase model of matter and the energy interaction diagrams. If you have your discussion lab workbook handy, you will notice that it starts out with blue fold-out pages that give brief summaries of these topics and all the other major topics in the course. If you ever get confused or need a quick reminder, you can turn to these pages for a quick recap. For the three-phase model of matter, we can use the temperature versus energy added diagram to see how much energy you have to add to raise the temperature of a sample or to change its phase. Since you already covered that material in high school, let's concentrate on the energy interaction diagrams, which you've probably never seen before. Let's take the example we saw in the lecture with the supercold ice cube dropped into the ice water. We're going to draw a complete energy interaction diagram for this case, since this is the kind of problem you might have on your first quiz. The physical system is the ice water and the ice cube. The system begins with the ice water at 0 degrees Celsius and the ice cube at minus 196 degrees Celsius. The system ends when everything is at 0 degrees Celsius and more of the water is frozen. We can neglect the amount of heat carried away by the surrounding air, so it's a closed system. On a quiz, I would probably be more careful and state in the question that it was in an insulated container or to neglect the heat loss to the surroundings. Since it's a closed system, we draw a closed line around everything. Now there are two energy systems that are changing, the thermal energy of the ice cube and the bond energy of the ice water. We could also include the thermal energy of the ice water, but since it's not changing, there's not much point in including it. The indicator for thermal energy is temperature, and we know that the initial temperature of the ice cube was minus 196 degrees Celsius, while its final temperature was zero degrees Celsius. The indicator for bond energy is the amount of mass of the liquid water. We could also use the mass of the ice as the indicator, but then the indicator and the bond energy would go in opposite directions. That is, as the amount of water goes down, the amount of ice goes up, while the bond energy goes down. It seems a little less confusing to choose the higher temperature phase as the indicator, so that the indicator and the bond energy move in the same direction. We don't know how much water there was at the beginning, but we know there was less liquid water at the end. So we know for sure that the bond energy went down. Finally, we can give a mathematical summary by writing an equation that expresses the conservation of energy for this case. The change in the thermal energy of the ice cube plus the change in the bond energy of the ice water have to add up to zero. As a final check, we can make sure that the signs are consistent. Delta E thermal is positive, while del delta E bond is negative. So that makes sense since they have to add up to zero. What would have happened if we had chosen our physical system to be just the ice water? Then we would have had an open system, since heat is flowing out of the water. Our final equation would be that the change in the bond energy of the water was equal to the heat transferred to the system, which in this case was negative.